Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture one of object oriented programming. Let's quickly start with uh, cloning our GitHub repository. In this lesson, we are going to use Microsoft Visual Studio as an IDA, Integrated Development Environment, and and we are going to use C-sharp programming language. Okay, here our repository. Okay, our repository is ready. I'm going to copy the ignore file. I'm going to compose okay, the folder that, it, that we need. Okay, today we are going to see uh, some of the core concepts of object-oriented programming. We are going to uh, make a quick recap of previous courses which were uh, Introduction to Programming and Advanced Programming. You will be able to find those courses on our channel in the future as we as we make those lessons and put on the uh, YouTube channel. Okay, I am going to compose a new project. This is Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition. You can download it from uh, Microsoft's website. All right, I'm going to make this as English. You just click download button and there. Okay, it downloads the community edition. So when installing the community edition, uh, what you need to choose is. Uh, let me show from the other video. Okay. Hello dear students, one second, I will just show what you need to choose, okay, okay, you need to choose uh, .NET desktop, desktop development, if you want you can choose ASP.NET and web development as well, you see on the right screen what we have chosen, and then you need to choose .NET Core cross-platform development. As you can see on the right side, we choose all these options when installing Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition. Just click install button, nothing else is necessary. Okay. And it will install like this. This is the first video of uh, introduction to programming languages you can also watch it on our channel okay so we are going to uh, work with console app dot net core we can also you can also uh, do the same with dot uh, net as well i mean uh, not core but framework uh, but .NET Core is uh, compatible with L Linux and MacOS, and it is the newest technology. So I think we should use the newest technology. I'm going to choose our directory. Okay, let's compose another folder.
and let's call it as lecture one. Okay. Okay, so uh, our uh, pretty much empty software is composite. It is loading the dependencies and it is loaded. All right, when we run, we will see the hello world. Okay, it is working. So C Sharp is an object-oriented language and what does object-oriented mean? Object-oriented means that everything is composite with objects and classes. Okay, let's look for what is the difference of object-oriented programming language? Okay, it says there are, uh, it compares uh, the pro 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 procedural programming and object-oriented programming differences. In procedural programming, program is divided into small parts called functions. In object-oriented programming, program is divided into small parts called as objects. Procedural programming follows top-down approach. Object-oriented programming follows bottom-up approach. There is no access specifier in procedural programming. Object-oriented programming have access specifier like private, public, protected. And there are some other differences. Okay, there, uh, they have provided the example C, Fortran, Pascal, Basic. All of these are... Uh, really old programming languages and these are the popular new programming languages such as C++, Java, Python, C Sharp. Okay, you can look this page to see all of the all of them, all of the differences. So, so in object in C Sharp everything is uh, encapsulated within the classes. Uh, let's start from the top We're using system this means we are using namespace system uh, for example this function is coming from uh, I mean okay there is no specific classes right now so this is just a custom class at the moment program class and this is our uh, main function this string rgs means we can provide some parameters when we are running this exe from, from console and console right line is just a method we call okay so here this console is a class it is written in system library that is why we are adding system namespace when i remove this you will see that it has become uh, underlined and it says there is no console class in current context. However, when I uh, command that line, I can start the software without any libraries. So, we use these libraries to use uh, custom functions custom methods and classes uh, developed by other people, other developers or Microsoft.NET team. Okay. So, there is static word. What was static word meaning? Static word means that this function is composed at the run, at the beginning of the application and it is alive during the entire application it is not instantiated uh, I, it is hard to pronounce but uh, i will uh, tell you 
Okay, let's just make uh, our own examples. They should be easier. I am going to compose myself another class. For example, to give you an example. Okay. Uh, this will be a non-static class, so you will get understand the difference. Okay, we don't use this. And this class will have a method called as into screen okay so we use a public keyword and void keyword public means that we can access to this method outside of this class it can be accessed from everywhere there are also protected and private uh, we will see that we will see them in future uh, so public is accessibility identifier and it defines that this method can be accessed outside of its parent scope. What is its parent scope? This class is its parent scope. Okay. Void means that this method does not return any value, uh, any data. And this is the constructor of the method. And as you can see, it doesn't take any data, any uh, object. Okay. So what will this method do? This method will do console right line. We said uh, it will uh, write a random number. So I am going to generate a round. Okay. So I have used random class within the system library and I just didn't leave it that way I said new random why is that because this is not a this class is not static class it has to be initialized instantiated uh, so I have instantiated it with defining like this and also I have initialized it with new random so this has initialized a new instance of random class using a time-dependent uh, default seed value. Okay, we don't provide seed value at the moment. It is uh, uh, provided by the .NET framework. So this new keyword is used to initialize this random object, this object of random class. And this random class is coded in system library, as you can see class system dot random okay so i'm going to type this random data next then i just type the first parentheses of a uh, constructor of the next method it shows me that it can take three uh, values as an as constructor what is it taking? It is taking nothing. If we don't provide any data to the constructor of next method of random class, it says it will return a non-negative random integer. What else I can provide? I can provide, I'm clicking the bottom arrow, maximum integer value that I want my random generator to limit it. So, this will be the ex exclusive upper bound of random number to be generated. Max value must be greater than 0 or equal to 0. Okay. And the third option, these are all method overloadings. We will see them in the future. We, I can provide mean value and max value. So, it says the inclusion lower bound of the random number number uh, random number return it it will generate numbers between the mean and max value i'm going to just uh, i will just use a empty constructor so it will return uh, a 13 
random number within the uh, minimum integer and maximum integer. Okay, so this is our non-static uh, class. So how can I call that class? Can I just call this method like this? The answer is no. Why? The name print to, the, print to screen does not exist in the current context. What is the current context in this line? This line is the uh, children of this context. As you can see, this the, the parent context of this line is these curly brackets. So, which is the main method. In main method, it cannot see print to screen. Why? Because no such method is defined under main method. So how am I going to use it? First, I have to define uh, an instance of this class. I can define, I can use this class in here because this class is uh, under uh, the scope of class program and main is also under the scope of class program. So they are in a cool level, so they can be used. And I'm going to say my enter. Okay, so uh, I have first uh, written the name of the class and written the name of my object and then I have initialized it with new parameter and I have not provided any I didn't provide any value here because this class doesn't have a, a custom constructor and it doesn't require any uh, parameters or data and then I will call as you can see now I can see print to screen Let's just run it. Now I see hello world and a custom integer number. Okay. So I'm going to uh, format this number a little bit to the string and then I'm going to uh, provide format. As you can see, it can take four parameters, it can be empty. It can be I format provider provider. It can be string format, a string format and I format provider. I will just format it to N0. This will separate uh, numerical value into the thousands. What I mean is, let's run it. As you can see, it has separated with commas. Why commas? Because uh, comma is the thousand separator in US language since my computer's default language is US English at the moment it is separated as commas okay and I am going to write another method private I will try to uh, call this method here. Okay, when I click that, IntelliSense doesn't show me is that method. Why? Because it is private. Private means that only functions, only methods within this class can use it. By the way, let's look at the, uh, what does function and method means. Uh, actually, they are the same thing. Method and function are the same with different terms. A method is a procedure or function in object-oriented programming. 
So if your programming language is object oriented, that means every uh, that means you call functions as methods. They are basically the same thing, but don't get confused. So we use the term method. A function is a group of reusable code which can be called anywhere in your program. This eliminates the need writing the same code again and again. So it is basically a function, but we call it as a method. Let's okay in JavaScript it is called as function. But in C sharp it is called as method. Okay. So I am not able to access this print to screen private method because it is set to private. And if I set it to protect it, I am still not able to access protected method because protected can only be accessed by the, uh, let's say, uh, classes inherited from the main class. Okay, so let's, uh, let's let me show you what I mean. I am going to compose another class. We will see them in the future with more details, but you will get the idea. And this new class, let's say, screen meter will be inherited from this class. Okay. So print screen will inherit features of print to screen random numbers I'm not going to write anything inside it and I'm going to write uh, another class here public uh, I mean method print protected this will just use this method Sorry. Okay, what does this mean? This means the class itself. Okay, I, I think I can remove this. Okay, yes, I can remove this. Just don't get confused at the moment. You see, I am able to call this method. Why? Because this print screen version 2 inherits print to screen random number so it can use protected and public methods of in that class but not the private one let's see you see i have a print to screen let's try this and as you can see it is not allowed because is inaccessible due to its protection level as you can see it is written on the uh, screen here however it can call public method as well so you can compose another object it can be and i can call of course this will be a like this and I can call you see I can call print to screen or I can call its own method which is print protected okay. so this will work as well let's try it okay let's just uh, add some Definition so we will know. I'm going to type print to screen and this is string concatenation, string operation, and 
private and protected and okay no need this okay so when i run it it will show which method is called print to screen print to screen protected and print to screen again so how can i use this print to screen private method i can put another method privately and this method can call print to screen private so since this method is inside the parent class of uh, print to sc screen private it can access the private modifiers of the parent uh, method so i can call it as print privately and it will work let's try it okay it is working so i use it a public method to access private variable method of or method of uh, the class so these are the three main access modifiers public private protected uh, and there is also internal the code is only accessible within its own assembly but not from another assembly <coughs> okay there is also internal command which is defined to which is restricted to that assembly what does that mean it means if i export this software as an dll uh, the other software that imports this dll cannot uh, use it i wonder if there's any example Okay, if you wonder it, you can check it later. It is not that important at the moment. Internal. Maybe we, we can just write here. Okay, and should be able to call it both from both uh, methods it has a uh, heart icon okay and I can call from another class as well okay so they can be accessed from both because they are in the same assembly in the same namespace probably from another namespace i may not access it i want to try it let's add an, another class internal test you see it uses the same namespace i will just uh, change the namespace and I'm going to add using uh, lecture one namespace dot not that like this and I will try to compose program pro class or just let's Okay, let's just uh, compose a method here. Test. And inside this method, I am going to compose program my program. So this program class is the class of lecture one program. This is, you see. 
I may change name of this. Let's say program class. Okay, and I'm going to change this name as well. So you see, this is the class of this class. I am able to access it since I am using namesake namespace of lecture one from here. Uh, oh, I will, I will uh, define another thing like this. From here, I am not able to access any of this. Why? Because this class is also by default private. I am going to make it public. Okay. So I will be able to access, define it like this. Sorry about that. Uh, another printer, okay. And from this, I will be able to call. Okay, I am still able to call internal, so it is not about namespaces, but rather it is about assembly. Okay, so the assembly is something different. Okay, it says here, only accessible from the code in the same exe or DLL. So we are, since we are in the same exe at the moment, I am able to access. However, if I were try to access from another DLL, I wouldn't be able to. Okay, let's show it as well. So we won't have any uh, any doubt, any suspicion. I'm going to create new project. I'm going to compose it like this. Okay, there's class library .NET standard. I'm going to Compose it as a class library. Mm, okay, class library dot net core. Okay, I will call it as lecture one DLL test. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. Okay, so it has a different namespace. It is not very important. I am going to just copy paste it. Public class class. Let's name it as yeah, so it won't get uh, mixed. And I'm going to right click and build. When I build, what will it do? It will compose a DLL file since this is a DLL project. And when I open binary, I will see the DLL as seen here. So I can use this DLL file in my another project. I'm going to, as you can see, there were uh, some libraries automatically added since I use system. I'm going to add my own DLL file. How am I going to do that? I'm going to... Right click and add new item and from here I'm going to add
or not from here I guess okay okay I'm going to add I'm going to add a reference but from here add project reference probably from here I'm going to add project reference I'm going to click browse I'm going to click browse again and from here I'm going to go source code, DLL test, binary debug and the DLL test file as you can see since it was that DLL file it is seen and I'm going to click OK okay now to use that DLL I have to type as using and lecture one DLL test okay from this DLL test I'm going to compose DLL my DLL object okay, as you can see this is the class I have composed in DLL I mean in a library project here so from here I should be able to call okay in here I'm able to call, call print privately to screen but not print internal because internal can only be called within the same assembly same DLL or, DLL or same exe file you see this can be called and this can be called but I mean this but this fails okay so we have shown so far uh, public private protected and internal access modifiers okay uh, I want to take a note of that what does we have shown? we have shown how to compose a custom class So this is our custom class. We have shown how to generate more okay and project let's copy this into the this is not notepad plus plus and it is a great text editor software that i use even is even if you close this window it would remain here as unsaved okay and let's close this notepad it's not good and uh, we have explained it of okay 
Okay, what else we have? Sin. Inheritance. So this is a simple example of a simple example of inheritance. Okay, so so far we have seen uh, this, and <coughs> I wanted to show you what does static mean. Okay, with example and with definition. So let's check the definition first. I'm going to start with definition in object oriented programming. OOP means object oriented programming. Static objects or members of a class that can be accessed directly from class. While, one second, I have to pause. Okay, continuing. Okay, in object oriented programming, static objects or members of a class that can be accessed directly from the class. While non static members can only be accessed from the in instance it belongs to. So, if object is non static, you have to have an instance of that class to call that method or access that. Uh, data, variable, whatever. But if it is static, you don't need instance. It is initialized when the first call it, not the when uh, first the uh, software started. If I said that, I think I, I have said that previously, but it is wrong. So, you see, I had to initialize all of these uh, classes to access their methods but if I want to access a class without initializing it I have to define a, a static class let's compose static unless uh, I will say static static class first I haven't defined it. I didn't define any uh, access modifier, so this is by default private. Okay. And uh, void Okay. Okay, so and uh, let's copy paste this one. Now I can call this method uh, like this. Of course, it will fail because I have to uh, say from which class it is in, like this, and I have to generate another no number generator. This will also throw an error. Why? Because this class is static and not instance based. So you cannot have non static uh, data in a static class. So it says, as you can see, cannot declare instance members in a static class. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make it as static and it is working now. You see, I use the same parameter name here and here. Why? Because they are in different scopes. They are not in the same scope. However, I would I couldn't I wouldn't be able to like this. It would say that uh, already contains a definition for my round gen. However, this would work. Okay. okay, so I'm going to remove it. And when we run the application. You see, without initializing, I am able to call it. And static is also working. Okay. So, uh, if I wanted to uh, limit this number, I can write like this. So, it will be minimum D 
zero and maximum 199 if I run it you see I can see it if you want to see the absolute uh, boundaries and for example let's run like this one and let's run this like okay so I will show you how to use code snippets I am typing four and you see it shows me three code snippet code snippet for for loop code snippet for for each statement and code snippet for this one reverse for loop after you type it code snippet you need to hit the top button twice I'm doing that top top and you see it has composed me a snippet so currently the variable i is selected I'm going to change I can change it uh, start number I click up button you see it has automatically named the local uh, variable and I'm going to change the length as 10 so this loop will uh, execute 10 times uh, and I'm going to write on the screen 10 times code snippets are extremely useful there are also other code snippets such as switch statement or while loop Okay, you see it has all written 0 and 1s so it generates 0 and 1 lower than the max value okay so I want to add this as well Let's say classes and methods with examples. Okay, and so there is also class constructors and class. Uh, let's check the previous use. Okay, we have seen this. We have seen this. Okay, class properties and fields. What are they? For example, what is, how do we call this? This is a class field. As you can see, it says class field. There can be also cl class properties. So, a field is a variable that is the layer it directly in a class or struct so as you can see this is directly declared in print screen static class properties enable a class to expose public way of getting and setting values while hiding implementation or verification code so I will explain you and show you what does this mean let's say I want to have a class uh, that can hold uh, cars and their prices. I'm going to define it as class cars. And I'm going to, uh, let's say a car, not a cars. So it will hold only a single car. It will have a public uh, string car name okay so by default let's say I can assign a default value to the uh, fields car name and let's say
Caesar car. <laughs> Uh, let's let's call the model, not a name. Car model. And, and okay, okay, on the creator, whatever it is, we don't. Okay, so by default it will be Hyundai Creator, or let's just let's call default car, not a brand. And I'm going to. So this is field because it is directly defined within the class and this class is not <coughs> static because I will I uh, in a such case you will compose lots of cars you would have lots of cars and you would like to have object of each car so an object defined with car class would hold information of each of your cars okay and I'm going to set property. So with property, I will be able to modify its uh, values without uh, showing prop. When I click prop and tap tap, it, it generates a property. Let's say uh, integers and price. So it has by default generated get and set these get and set can be expanded and modified okay just uh, go one by one so i am going to uh, from here i am going to console clear this will clear the console and uh, i will Compose a car class object car my car new car my car no not but as you can see one of them is displayed as field and other one is displayed as uh, integer so property you see it has a different icon than this but I can do uh, set the same I'm going to set the model as but before that, I will just uh, print the screen. Okay, I am going to put a dollar value in front of the screen, in front of the uh, string, so I can uh, directly embed uh, variables in, into that uh, string. With these curly braces, this is a special sign text, and I'm going to put it here, and then uh, I am going to okay. So let's just run the application. Okay. So my default car, car model is default car and my changed model is my second model car. I was able to directly modify it like this because it's a, a public variable and it can be accessed from anywhere, it can be changed from anywhere, it is not read only. And then I'm going to define my car price. As I'm going to uh, copy paste this as well. Let's say my card default price. And my change it price is price. Okay. Okay, we see default is 0 and change it is uh, 351. Why default is 0? Because integers get 0 by default uh, since uh, they are uh, struct type. But strings are class type, so by default they are null if you don't assign anything. And let's, let's show what I mean. 
Mm. I'm not assigning it anything. Okay. So if I uh, type like this, okay, it will print nothing. You see, it is null. Null means nothing. If I make it like this string it will throw an error why because uh, object reference not set to an instance of an object because we had left it as null okay so this throws error however if you give it like this the whole right line uh, changes uh, null to an empty string so this is the feature of right line if you make it to string it throws an error okay and let's see the uh, get and set method i'm going to set another thing uh, like this it will be like this uh, private int here Okay. So this will be a field but private it cannot be accessed from uh, anywhere else and I'm going to prop and here this will be public and in get and set methods it will use Okay, I think I will make them, make them like this. If you don't remember something, always use Google. Okay, okay, the sign text was like this, okay. So, it will return this value as get and set this as value. The value is the parameter that is coming from uh, assignment. So I'm going to change it a little bit. But I'm going to make it like this. If equal to zero, I will set it as by default 2000. It will return 2000 as year. Okay. Or just say return 2000 directly. Or let's make it lower than 2000 it will return 2000 this is the get method and for set method okay let's say um, if in a year private value bigger than 3000 I will set it to 3000 And I will set it to value and abstract one second. Abstract by ten. Okay. So I have defined it custom get and set for property in uh, IR year. As you can see, it has a different icon. Okay, now everything is ready. So, let's see what are the default values. I'm typing my card. My card default year is. Okay. 
Okay. So what would this print to the screen? From this, what do you see? By default, this is zero. So if it is smaller than 2000, it will return 2000. However, it will still remain as zero. Okay. So this is the get method. Let's run it. You will see that instead of zero, it is returning 2000. As you can see, for example, let's, I am going to set it, set it by default. This, however, it will still return 2000. Okay. Because it is the, it is going through this get method when you access it like this. This is the difference of property versus field. You access the field directly. However, you access the property within that uh, get and set methods. Okay. So I'm going to set it to another value. Like, let's say, uh, this and what would it print at this time? It would, when I'm setting it, set value subtract 10. So it would print 2123. Let's run it. Okay, as you can see, it has printed 2,123. So if I set it, let's say, is what would it print? It would print 2,000. You see, because it is now lower than 2,000. And let's say I set it as like this. What would it print? It would print... 2113 okay okay why it didn't return 3000 uh, 3, because after we said it we said it here again so I have to modify it like this or just uh, change the orders like this so it will return 3000 uh, as a developer as, as a software engineer you have to be expert of debugging with debugging you can solve your problems so i'm going to put here i'm going to put here a debug because we had a problem on this line, I'm going to put here a debug half. I'm going to toggle breakpoint or click here breakpoint or F9. It will do all the same. And then I'm going to click F5 to run. So we are running on debug mode right now. You see debug and any CPU. And I am going to click step into. So step into. Okay, it says step into request result in an automatic step over a property. And or by unchecking the option step over property then operator. So there was an option. Step over properties and operators. So I'm going to remove it. So it should work right now. I'm going to step into that. And you see it has come into the set step. Why? Because on this line we are setting a new value. 
to the uh, property of my car class and when I go with uh, step into you see currently uh, it is value is 113 because we had set 113 here but when you get it it since it is below 2000 it shows 2000 and it is setting the new value so the new value is 3113 the original value we supplied was 3123 and since it is uh, above 3000 it will become like this you see debug and executing a step into step over or step out they are extremely useful you should become expert of debugging to solve your problems okay i continue and i see them on the screen with step by step okay and Let's not just remove this line. Okay, okay, there are lots of other methods too. Okay, we still have time and let's uh, show the dictionaries. One second, I will take a pause. Okay, so we will continue with dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries are object types that is extremely useful to store data with keys and values you can access the data extremely fast and efficiently and let's start with example for example i am going to write a method uh, that will generate random numbers and uh, for certain amount and we will keep how many num how many of each number is generated okay so i'm going to define uh, another Number. Let's say I am going to generate uh, 1000 times number, random numbers. The dictionary format is like this. It gets a T key, the type of keys in the dictionary, and T value. That means any object can be key and value. So the key will be uh, integer number and the value will be integer number. In our case, okay, so uh, in this for loop, I am going to generate a number between 1 and 100. So, to be between uh, 1 and 100, I am setting like this, and there is also var keyword which automatically decides the uh, uh, variable type in this case it will be integer as you can see it shows it will be integer and i will add it to the dictionary okay 
So if I make it like this, it would throw an error because each dictionary can have uh, a key to be added only one time. You cannot add same key twice. Let's run and see the error. Okay, it didn't throw error because we haven't called that method and I am calling that method. Oh, we have added the E and E is, uh, I is uh, unique. So I'm going to add a key as the VR number and it will throw the error now. Okay, it says an item with the same same K has already been added, K80. So, uh, what can I do to solve this problem? I can do try and catch. But it is of course not the proper way, but I am going to, uh, for teaching purposes, I am going to make it try and catch. So, it will try catch an exception and if it throws an exception what does that mean that means that key has already been added so what i am going to do is we are numbers plus plus what does this mean this means that if you go to the uh, object with this key and it will increase its number one time this is equal to yes it's above line so with this way we will count how many times each number has been generated okay however it will be very ineffective <coughs> we can uh, check the uh, uh, time to check the time i am going to use stopwatch so let's start it with um, I'm going to make the best in correct way and timer dot start okay and when it is done I'm going to timer and uh, console right line Elapsed milliseconds, elapsed six, if I elapse, say total, okay, total uh, milliseconds, let's see. Okay, elapsed uh, total mass, okay, so this is the improper way of adding numbers to a dictionary and uh, in, uh, increasing number and I'm going to write a proper way of this one so instead of this we are going to make it like this if 
continuous key here number I just increase the number of times that a uh, key has been generated by one and I'm going to add as a new key and value Okay, and call this as well. Okay, we will see the try catch difference. Try catch is a very um, CPU exhausting uh, process. Uh, let's check it without debugging because with debugging it is even slower. Each try catch, okay. You see, with try catch method, it took uh, 2000 around 500 milliseconds. With proper way, it took only 6 milliseconds. So each try catch is an, exa an exhausting uh, process for the uh, CPU. You should use try catch for only situations that you cannot control the input value or the uh, value so if you cannot be sure that there won't be any error or there will be errors you you use try catch if not you don't use it we can we can also limit the exception type i guess uh, i guess uh, like um, Oh, it will break difference. So, what we are going to do next is we are going to uh, write to a file generated numbers. How am I going to do that? I'm going to use string builder. The string operations also takes too much time. Okay, let's show uh, in both ways. I'm going to write another method to prevent duplicate usage. I'm going to get dictionary and Integer, integer. And I'm going to uh, Okay, so this is the tr proper way, so string builder For each dictionary, so we are looping through items of dictionary. I'm going to append line. So here uh, it will append as. Okay, it will append and file write operation. To use file file uh, class, I have to use system IO library. 
YouTube file is also a class and I am using method write all text. So the path will be here and the content will be this one. I also want to uh, see how much time it is taking so I'm going to stop watch okay stop watch I'm going to start it we need to put value here I'm going to stop it I'm going to write here Okay, and I am going to uh, compose in proper way. Okay, this time we are going to use a string. And we are going to Make it like this. Plus. This. This uh, over R and, and means uh, uh, new line and end of co uh, co cursor. I will just show you what I mean. Okay, but uh, over N is POSIX style, over R is old pre old style. Okay, here the uh, definition. Over R is a carriage return and over N is a line feed. So with this, we uh, get to the new line. With this, the carriage return is put You can get more information with them. Alternatively, I can use these two. It's also used a lot. It will put a new line or just uh, make it in line like this. Okay. So, this time we are just writing this to the file. And okay, we have the timings. So after calling this uh, dictionary, I am going to uh, call the function. Let's call it after. Um, let's just uh, comment this to get faster results. And I'm going to call this function. So for this function, I'm going to provide this and text. Okay, let's just use other one to follow the other one. It shouldn't make any difference. Just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to call incorrect way and just just let's run the application and, and ah, okay here okay so with proper way It just it just took 18 milliseconds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And with improper way, it took uh, 18. And with uh, 
Ah, we cannot, we are not able to, uh, let's say, calculate the speed here because there are only 100 elements. To increase, we need an increased element size to uh, make the test. So I'm going to change test to a different thing. Let's say I'm going to have one. Uh, let's let's say like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to copy this. Compose bigger file. Let's just remove this from here. So this time I'm going to generate one million file with just random numbers and add them to the keys so we will see uh, the bigger dictionary difference and let's just uh, change this to Okay, there is. No, we haven't called this yet. I'm going to call it. See the difference. So, this time, uh, our right to. Uh, okay, still we are way behind of. Okay, this looks um, in, incorrect. Let's open the files to see whether they are correctly written or not. Or oh, not this one. Okay. Oh, you see the incorrect way. Didn't write the file correctly. Oh, we haven't called it probably. Just let's find our error. Okay, with proper way, yes, we are properly writing it. And with incorrect way, Okay, it looks like we are having an error or something. Let's just debug it. Okay. Yeah, it looks correct. Oh, improper way is still going on. Okay, okay, let's just test. Test like this one second. I will remove this and start without debugging. Okay, so with proper way of writing uh, dictionary to file took only 1300 ms and in incorrect way of uh, composing a string to write to a file is taking still taking time because when you uh, concat strings like this each time a new string object is generated and it takes huge toll on the uh, computer hardware let's see the uh, CPU usage okay so currently our software is using one core uh, to the max and it is still taking time 
it is just taking too much time I'm going to reduce uh, okay I'm going to reduce I'm going to reduce the number because it is taking just simple too much. I'm going to make it like um, well, here. One second. I'm going to set it to one hundred thousand in instead of one million. Okay, it should be fast enough. You see, the debug and non-debug takes different times. Because in debug mode, um, it is not optimized to its maximum performance, but if you run it without debug, it is better. Okay, even with 1 million, it is still taking time. We can add a counter display if we want. Okay, I am going to add a counter so we can have idea of uh, where it is. So you will learn how to um, write counters. Oh, we didn't fix the previous one. What's here? Okay, let's test it again with 10,000. Okay, proper way took 100 and non-proper way took, as you can see, 4000 and it can be even higher. Let's test it when it is uh, 100,000. I'm going to test without. Okay, proper way took only 300 ms. And yeah, let's add a... Uh, counter if... This means if E over 1000, if E can be... Uh, divided to 1000 perfectly uh, it will enter inside of this if statement and here I am going to write uh, set, let's say um, oh I'm going to change it I'm going to write it here, yeah, here. So we're going to have a counter and we are going to put here. Oh, just let's uh, just write this so it will be easier to read. I'm going to make it console write so it will be shown in sim single line. I'm going to make it over. Okay, format it a little bit and let's put here. It means top character. Okay, let's see. So now we can have an idea of. Oh, wait, we have forgotten to increase our counter after each loop. So like this. So after each loop, we will increase our counter. Okay, as you can see so far, 10,000 of uh, 100,000 is processed. 
Okay, I want you to um, focus on something else. You see the um, speed of processing decreases over time. Why? Because that single um, string object is becoming bigger and bigger. It will also increase the uh, RAM memory usage over time. Let's uh, look at the memory usage. Okay, it is becoming even slower. However, the proper way of writing string to a file took only 400 ms. And the other one is taking forever as the string becomes bigger. Because the output is 5 megabyte and each in each turn you are composing a 5 megabyte file. And it is continuing to get uh, bigger. Let's see. So you see, this number has been randomly generated one time. Yes, of course, this is expected because it is our uh, latest uh, version. Okay. Okay, it is stuck. It's taking forever now. So you get the idea of properly uh, composing big strings. If you are going to compose a big string, never use string concatenation like this. Let's see if I'm typing correctly. Okay, it was right. It's written like this. All right. So, what we have um, seen. Um, Okay, um, format. Okay, what else we have shown? Okay, okay, I will show the uh, remaining parts in the next lesson let's summarize and see if we have shown anything else
Okay, I think uh, for this week these are enough. I'm going to save this into the don't push library. Okay, lecture one content. I am going to upload this software to our GitHub repository. Uh, you should learn how to use GitHub. Uh, you should do your uh, programming in your GitHub repository so you can continue your work from home, office, school, wherever you want. GitHub, GitHub management is extremely important. Code management is extremely important. Uh, okay, I'm going to close this and close this. Uh, hopefully we will uh, meet next week as well. So I'm going to type git, uh, git status command to see. Uh, okay, first we need to get entered our uh, repository. I click it up so it completed that uh, folder name. So it says you have new file that is untracked. I am going to add it as so I have added all files to the tracking and okay it and I'm going to take it push origin master. So now on our GitHub repository, these project files will appear. Let's see. Okay, it is updated 17 seconds. You see the source code has arrived here. Both of them, you can open them and see the code, what we have written, as you can see. So how can you download this? You can uh, download the entire repository such as with clone command or download as zip. So I will show you the clone command. Let's say I want to clone it to my desktop, so I install Gitbash. Um, just let's type bash. Okay, this is called as git bash. Okay, you download this software. This is it. So open that software. You go to the uh, place where you want to download the file. I type cd desk and just type like this. Okay, let's type like this. Interesting. Okay, let's just type this like. Okay, I have, I have provided, huh, okay. So when I provide the full path, it works. Then, you can get here and copy this and just uh, paste it here. And, okay, it didn't work. So I'm going to copy like this. And I'm going to type with clone, paste. You see, I have copied actually the full path. Uh, URL of the repository here, same as here. And when I click, oh, it says there's already a um, folder name the same. So I say make the gg. Oh, there is no command. So I let's, let's compose our own folders. 
If you compose a folder like this, it is easier. So I say CD GG and I say git clone. So the entire project will be cloned into here. From there, you can get the uh, latest source files or alternatively you can click download you should learn how to use github git page it will be extremely useful for you uh, in your uh, future in your job okay hopefully uh, meet you next week please subscribe and like our videos it will uh, make YouTube to give more in importance to our videos therefore YouTube will likely to generate automatic subtitles and automatic subtitles makes my job much easier to uh, put manually corrected subtitles to the videos our channel name is courses here this one just click subscribe and all the videos will be posted here. You see I am also giving uh, introduction to programming languages course and uh, you can also watch them if you have uh, missing parts of the previous lessons. If you are not good enough, uh, it will be useful for you too. Uh, thank you very much. Hopefully see you next week.